two nations, Kratos and Eluia, have come to an uneasy peace treaty, sealed with an arranged marriage. The cultures of the two nations are radically different, and in general each one finds the other to be strange and at times outright offensive. So, Bethany strolled into the great hall of the palace. Royal guardsmen from both the Eluians and Cratons bowed as she approached. Uh, so this is a complete sentence separate from that, so it should be a full stop, I believe. Seeing them side by side sent an odd and conflicting shiver through, through her. The Eluian guards stood nearly half a head taller than their Creighton counterparts. Instead of shoes, the Eluian guards wore leather wrappings around the centre of each foot, leaving, their, leaving the heel and toes exposed. Bethany recalled that this suited the fighting style of the typical Eluian warrior, allowing them to speed the speed and agility they were known for in battle. They each wore a flowing red sarong trimmed in gold and fastened by a wide black leather belt at the midriff. A narrow studded black leather baldric crossed their bare chests from left hip over the right shoulder. I'm just going to look at what baldric is. <laughs> okay, it's like a belt that goes left hip over the right shoulder. I guess is all that is. Okay. Each baldric was adorned with simple but distinct metal and stonework symbols. Bethany recalled from her lessons that these stood for the soldiers' rank and different honours they had won. Each one wore a rich collection of artistic tattoos covering their bodies, depicting symbols and images of warriors in combat, or dragons, snakes, and other creatures Bethany did not recognise. Their helmets seemed the only concession to armour of any kind. Made of shaped leather and bone, and framed in steel with gold trim, each hel helm fanned into a hood resembling that of a cobra draping down behind their shoulders and tapering to a point at the small of their back. I'm finding it really hard to picture what this helmet looks like. It's quite unusual. A pair of polished steel fangs hung in front of their painted, tattooed faces. Adding to the frightening visage were they, their long, spear-like naginata, each ending in a curved blade nearly the length of a short sword. The inner arc of the blade was a gl glimmering black obsidian, serrated and vicious looking, while the outer arc. It's strange that there's a semicolon there when it's. This is just continuing the sentence. While the outer arc was polished steel and sharpened to a smooth razor's edge. So. Cool descriptions and stuff. That's cool. Um, I'd probably just focus on the look of things and not the reasons for things. Like, um, oh, she remembered it's so that they are fast and agile. And she remembered that the symbols are uh, the soldier's rank and different honours they had won. And things like that. Um, I'd just lean more into this character doesn't really understand these this other people so we just see these things and doesn't necessarily know all about what, uh, what they mean and then later on you can have an actual Eluian person explain them if you want to or maybe it just doesn't matter at all to the actual story in which case like the, these details don't have, have, have to actually come out and also, this is huge, uh, which means that she's spending a lot of time just staring at them to see all those things, because in the reader's mind, um, it takes... So, if this takes five minutes to read, it takes five minutes for this stuff to happen. And not much else is happening, so it's, it's kind of established that she's um, walking through this tunnel of guards on either side so during this time she's at least walking down this this aisle but it just feels like a 
a lot of thinking and examining of everything. Uh, and also it adds up to being like a huge effectively um, like info dump while it's actually describing something in the scene it's just going into such detail that it's just a wall of text and uh, with no real breaks because there's no real opportunity to break because it's just the the description is just that detailed um, so I might instead of going into all this detail give it in more general terms about like there's uh, le there's leather belts and their skin is um, they got they have bare chests and skin tattoos crawling over their skin that kind of stuff and then later on you can say oh she notices a new thing of, of like the the like stonework symbols on their a belt going across their chest like a specific thing and then you can describe that specific symbol um and wondering what it means that kind of stuff like later on in the party or noticing a specific tattoo is a dragon and it kind of freaks her out or she thinks it's cool stuff like that so then it brings out the personality of um of bethany who i think is the the viewpoint character but also it gives you time to actually describe some of them some of these specific details because we're getting a lot of pseudo details where um they all have tattoos and it's stuff like symbols and warriors and dragons and snakes and other creatures but we don't actually see any specific like this is a dragon and it looks like this and it's on this part of the body and stuff so it's kind of abstract anyway but it's abstract in a very detailed way <laughs> so um yeah that would be my advice on that